Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated True Broadcast. A broadcast uh, is a live Bible question and answer program uh, that you, the radio audience, at any point in time during this uh, broadcast, you can pick up your phone, dial the number 281-837-2222 if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make. I'd love to give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions. Listen to any reasonable comments you'd like to make. Hey, grab your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 15, going to read into our hearing. Uh, uh, from Matthew 15, and we'll read down uh, beginning at verse number 1. Uh, Matthew 15, and we'll continue at verse number 1 as we deal with the subject, Does the word of Christ's servants offend you? Does the word of Christ's servant offend you? In Matthew 15, beginning at verse number 1, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me of thee, uh, me with your mouth, and honored me with your lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which going into the mouth defileth a man, but that which coming out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind, leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. We read Matthew 15, 1 through 14, and our subject matter is, does the word of God's servants offend you? You know, there are many uh, who listen uh, to this program and uh, have been listening to it for years, uh, members and non-members, uh, who when they hear the oracles of God repeated, uh, they somehow are made to believe or think that these are our words, but I want you to understand what we uh, have propagated for years on this broadcast is that we need to read our answer, and we read our answer and explain our answer by rightly dividing uh, the Word of God. Now, you have to understand the Bible is the only standard of authority. Uh, the way God speaks to you and I today is, and the way he communicates with us today, is through the 66 books that we call the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, and these books, these words in these books must be rightly divided. Every book we have in the Bible, I want you to understand this, is not inspired because it's in the Bible. They are in the Bible because they are inspired. Make sure you understand the difference. Every book we have, from Genesis to Revelation, are not inspired because they're in the Bible. They are in the Bible because they are, in fact, inspired. Matter of fact, 2 Timothy 3.16, real quickly, I just want to read this scripture as we move along through the, the thought we want to bring about today on this broadcast. In 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 and verse number 16, a scripture often quoted uh, by many of us who've been in the, uh, the church uh, any length of days, where Paul writes to Timothy, and he says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, here you go, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so you must and I must believe that what we are holding in our hand, laps, and some of you got in your apps, is, is inspired word of God. They are written by God, the Holy Spirit, and they must be studied. And they must be rightly divided. Paul, when he wrote to the saints in Ephesus, lets us know that the word of God God's word can, in fact, be understood. We have so many different religions and so many different denominations in our world today because there are many uh, who don't believe that God's word, when read and rightly divided, can be understood. But Paul begged to differ when he wrote to the saints in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 3, he, he talks about how the things that he wrote actually came uh, from inspiration. He was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And we'll just start in verse number 1 of Ephesians 3. He said, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner 
risen of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. You have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to you. How that by revelation, Paul says, he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote in a few words, whereby, listen what he says, Ephesians 3, 4. When you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And so Paul uh, believed that the word of God could be uh, understood. But the question is, does the word of God's servants, do they offend you? Well, at the end of the day, I want you to understand if the words of God's servant, his preachers, his teachers, the, the elders and the deacons offend you, the words that we propagate from uh, this radio uh, uh, airways, if it offends you, I'm going to tell you who you have the problem with. You have the problem at the end of the day with God. Amen. I understand that because when we talk about what Jesus, and many of you on here don't believe uh, that there is a hell. You hear people all the time talking about where there is no hell. Jesus died on the cross. Uh, for the sins of the world. Uh, we heard just last week that you brothers, y'all make it hard, man, uh, for people uh, to live right and to do right. Because we're talking about there must be some things obeyed uh, in order for you and I to make heaven our eternal home. Yes, Amen. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world, but there are some conditions that must be met by mankind in order to receive to receive that salvation or that gift. Now, I want to point out something that some of you may not know. I'm going to start at John 7. Go to the Gospel of John chapter 7. Now, remember, we're talking about does the word of God's servant offend you? Understand that Jesus had a God. Jesus has a Father. Even as we speak in heaven, Jesus has a Father. And what that Father did, matter of fact, let's go to John 1.1 1, 1 first. I got a little time. John 1.1. 1, 1. What this Father did, or what the Father, let me say it like that with some respect and reverence. What the Father did is he sent his Son to this world to die for your sins and for my sins. In John 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. Y'all see that? The Word. Remember, we're doing, does the Word of God serve and offend you? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Y'all see that? So what John's explaining, he's proving it throughout the gospel, is that Jesus is not the Father, but he is the Son of God. And Jesus was with the Son of God, or forgive me, with the Father before the world was ever brought into fruition. That's what he's showing here. He was with his Father. Jesus was with his Father. John 1.14 says, and this word became flesh, John 1.14, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so we talked on this before that in order to be the word, you had to come from somebody. Understand that. The word itself implies that someone had to speak you. Speak you. It came from somebody. So the point John is making is Jesus is what the Father has to say to us. We listen to the words of Christ because the words that Christ brought, I'm going to prove this in a minute, they came from his Father. Amen. Now go to John 7, 16. Jesus stressed this over and over throughout this gospel that the words that he spoke were not his own. The words that he spoke were not his own. He spoke for the Father. Many of you want God, but you don't want the Son. You don't want to listen to the Son. You don't want to obey the Son. You don't want to worship like the Son. You don't want to get baptized and become a, a member of the church that you can read about in the Bible like the Son said you must do. Now, but you understand something. When you reject the Son's teaching, you reject what the Father told him to teach. Amen. Understand that. And I'm going to prove it. In John 7, 16. In John 7, 16. This is what Jesus did. Jesus answered him and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. You see that? Jesus said, what I taught, it didn't come from me. He says it came from my father. Go to John 8, 26. It says, it says it over and over throughout this gospel. Go to John 8, 26. I just want you to read it for yourself. Read and believe. In John 8, chapter, at chapter 8, verse 26, Jesus said, I have many things to say and to judge you of, but he that sent me, that's his father, that's right. is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. You see that? Yeah. Go to John 14 and verse 10. John 14, verse 10. Just, gonna, just go through some scriptures again. All I'm doing is, is showing you that the, the Jesus was a servant of his father. That's what he was. He was a servant of his father. You know, this is why they killed him. They, because they claimed to love God, but they wouldn't listen to the words of his son. That's right. You know why many of you hate us? Many of you hate members of the church of Christ? Because they repeat the oracles of God. You know, that's all we do is read our answer, and you mad at us. You know, what we say is not true, what are you worried about it for? If, you, if, if, if what we're saying is, 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 is not true, what are you worried about it for? 
Why do you have to call and, and, and want to scoff and, and want to ridicule and want to make fun? If you think you got it, then just read your answer. See, because all we're doing is repeating the oracles of God. Jesus is the one that said he that believed and is baptized should be saved. We read our answer because they came from God. Now, look in John chapter 14 and look with me in verse 10. Jesus says it again. John 14 and verse number 10 of our Bible. He says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. You see that? Look in verse 24. Just run down verse 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Over and over and over again. Amen. Many of you say, I love God. Uh, God is number one in my life. Uh, he, is, he is to be respected in my life. There is nobody in my life above God. Question, are you doing what his servant said for you to do? His servant, before he went to heaven, go to Mark 16, and I'm going to talk to one of these good brothers, Javier, Brother Jose. God's servant, which was his son, his only begotten son, came to this world, as we mentioned, to repeat the oracles of his father. That's exactly what he did. His doctrine wasn't his own. His doctrine was of his father. Many of you think you're going to make it to God and you're going to skip over what his son said for you and I to do to get to him. That's why Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father, get this, but by me. That means by being obedient to his word. Not you and I making up what we think God ought to do and what God ought to say. Making up in your mind there is no hell. It's ridiculous, the stuff we hear on this program. When Jesus talked about hell over and over and over again. Because you can't understand why and how a God can take a soul and throw it in a hell fire and it be punished forever and not consumed. I would like for the person that, that says this, that he doesn't understand or can't see how God can take a soul. I want you to get this and throw it in hell fire and not be consumed. Well, answer this for me. How can God in a wilderness take a bush and it be, cons uh, it be burned on fire and not be consumed, which caused Moses to go over to the bush and the Lord told him, take off your shoes because you stand on holy ground. 281 837 22 so you mean to tell me that God can take a bush, put it on fire and not be consumed, but he can't take your soul and do the same? Mm -hmm. Explain another one to me. How was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. thrown into a fiery furnace that burned the men that were trying to throw them in there, but yet, yet them they themselves were not consumed? Do you get Amen. what I'm telling you this, morning, or this afternoon? There is a real hell. Amen. Yes, Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world, but there are some conditions that must be met if you and I are going to see God the Father's face in peace. And that means you must obey the words of God's servant. Amen. Now, in Mark chapter 16, I'm tossing it. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, 14, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. After we appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat, abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He said unto them, go into all the world, listen to this, and preach the gospel to every creature. Why would you have to preach the gospel if he's already died, buried, and been rolled? What is the point? Everybody's going to heaven. There is no hell. Jesus died for the sins of the world. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Listen at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You understand that? But listen to this. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, what kind of language is that? Damned to what? If you don't obey the gospel of Jesus, if you don't believe and get baptized, damn to what if everybody goes to heaven? If there is no hell, what does Jesus mean in Mark 16 and verse 16? It's a ridiculous doctrine. It's a horrible doctrine. It's a doctrine that's quoted by unlearned men Amen. and women in our world. So the question is, does the word of God's servant offend you? And if you're called in, we want to call, you want you to call in with some scripture, not your lips. Please understand, because the phone is lit up. And we're going to take the calls, but we want some scripture, not your lip service. 281-832, uh, forgive me, 837-2222. Go ahead, caller, you're on the line. Hey, man, uh, you, hold on, hold on, hold on. One thing about it, Henry Stevenson, man, this thing. Wars within and wars without. Go ahead. You need to teach and love, man. You, you come off as angry and bitter with you. I'm looking for a scripture, uh, Junior. 
I mean, man, uh, everybody's grown and can read, study the Bible before they sit. To, to me, and I ain't trying to be disrespectful, man, but you need to relax, man. Okay, rela how do I do that, Junior? Can you tell me what I need to do? That, uh, okay, Junior, can you tell me what I need to do? More highly than you ought to. You, you come from across that self-righteous. Junior. He's not this. Keep him on. 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 Like what, Junior? Like what? Like what? Do you want the okay, the same judgment that you need out, the same gonna be need under it? I agree. Junior, I agree with that. Now what is but but okay, but brother but junior, junior what you want anybody to go and then when you talk about keep on the line. I got patience today. Hey, Junior. So let me ask you something. So, Junior. Okay, I hear you talking, Junior, but can you answer a question for me? In Luke 16, who are those in Luke 16? Is that the devil and his angels that in Luke 16 that Jesus saw about? See, now don't I'm just gonna read because you're not giving, and I'm gonna be impatient with you because I said I knew this was gonna stir you up, Junior. I knew you were gonna be the one that called. Let me just tell you. You're gonna be the one to call because you're the one I'm making reference to. You're the one I'm making reference to. You're the one I'm making reference to about last week. Now, the the problem with you, Junior, is you are you are overzealous in love. That, that, I'm gonna tell you, you 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 make your own definition of love when you start saying that people won't go to hell because of what Jesus did on the cross. That's right. He paid out. Okay, so so explain to me what Jesus is talking about in Mark sixteen fifteen. Who's gonna be damned if they don't obey the gospel? Those that don't that don't obey the gospel, but, but being damned don't mean they're gonna kill. Them. What does it mean? I'm asking you. What does it mean then? That's all. I'm, what does it mean then? Help us understand what it means. If you don't do this, if you don't do that. Well, Junior, all I'm asking you, Junior, now I'm in, Junior, Junior. You're not going to kill your kids because you love them. What was that true? The body and the soul. The body and the soul. Matthew 10. Okay, let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Junior, 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 you got to get out of your feelings, Junior. You got to get out of your feelings. You got to get out of you know there are people sometimes that no nah, yeah you are Matthew ten twenty eight you're in your feeling Junior you don't want to listen you I'm gonna turn you down now you're not I'm gonna turn you down because you're wasting time I got four of the callers now listen to me Junior you're in your feeling you know there are sometimes people that you it Matthew well then you gotta listen Matthew ten twenty eight here's love here's love because I want you to go to heaven that means you gotta obey Jesus said, if you love me keep my commandments now Matthew ten twenty eight listen to what Jesus said. And fear not that you. I want you to explain it because you're doing a lot of lip. Now listen to Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them. And fear not them. All right, turn him down because y'all want to listen. Now listen to this. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now Junior won't stay on the line to be able to explain that. He won't be able to explain why Jesus uses what he uses in Luke 16 about the rich man and Lazarus. That's not the devil and the angels in Luke 16. The rich man and Lazarus both die. And one lifts up his eyes in a devil's hell. Somebody say, well, why do you call it devil's hell? Let me show you why. Now, I know we got other, Matthew 25, and I'm going to talk to the brother. We got other callers. But real quick, this is why we call it a devil's hell, because Jesus calls it a devil's hell, because that's who it was prepared for. Matthew 25, listen to this. This is what's going to happen on Judgment Day. I need you to explain this. When he, when, he, when he can calm down and just read. In Matthew 24, and verse 41, Jesus is showing us uh, the process of judgment day whenever uh, his father sends him back. Then shall he say, listen to verse, because there's a sheep and there's a goat. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now understand, when Jesus uses sheep and goat, he ain't talking about a literal sheep and goat. When he said the sheep on his right and the goats on his left, that's not literal. He's talking about people. There's the people that'll do right, and there's going to be people that do wrong. One's going to be called a sheep and a goat. 
and the goats are going to be thrown into an everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. You know, I don't know what kind of sin that Junior got going on in his life, but I want Junior to know he can be forgiven just like we can be forgiven of That's our right. sins if he come into obedience to what Jesus said. This is a message of love. That's why God sent his son. It, the gospel is a message of love. You can be saved from whatever you're doing and live a righteous life. But you must, you can't just practice sin and think you're going to heaven. 281-837-2222. We have other calls on the line? Okay, go ahead, call you. Uh, have you, you had something you yeah, want to interject? Yeah, I just want to add, ahead, uh, you know, when it comes to Mark 3, 5, Jesus, and when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, Jesus Christ, Jr., got angry when he was on earth. Paul got angry at Peter. Peter got angry at Simon, the sorcerer. There was different times when there was anger showed because of false doctrine, because of unbelief. And so when it comes to zeal, this is a part of it as well. You can't subtract that from the Bible. And one thing that Junior doesn't want, he doesn't want hell to be real for those that are damned. You see how on live radio he tried to change the definition of damned? You see how he tried to change that definition? Now he doesn't want to talk about hell as if it's not a part of the doctrine of Christ. Hell is part of the doctrine of Christ. Amen. Amen. Junior, and so is damned, which is condemned. You can't change the definition of words to please yourself or whoever you teach or whoever you surround yourself with. Amen. 2127 Go ahead, call. You're on the air. Yeah, I want to just bring it back on what, what Junior said. Uh, what, 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 uh, he got the beginning, but that, that, this is the beginning, and he died for our sin. That's just the beginning of the rest, so it is up to us to finish and you got to see this all being what he's saying. I mean, he got the beginning, and he stuck at the beginning. And he needs to uh, just live a life or go read him to his words and his ways. Thank you very much. Amen. Yeah, his problem is he doesn't want to obey. Amen. He wants to find a way out. All have sinned and fall short. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's not a scripture for you to take advantage of or try to use for you to sin whenever you want to. Man. You could just sin however much you want to and just quote that scripture. Well, all of sin to fall short, glory to God. That's not an excuse to sin. That doesn't tell you to sin because that's in the scriptures. We have another call on the line. Go ahead, call. You're on the air. Okay. Um, I just got to tell you, you don't come off as angry as me. I don't agree with everything you say, but you sound angry. <laughs> you got ill and you're angry. Okay. Uh, Thank that's you. true. Thank you for that call, caller. Man. Yeah, and because it, it's in the Bible a multitude of times. But, he, again, his mind, his imagination does not want to bring it into existence or fruition. He wants to hop over it, and he wants scriptures that talk about mercy and love. Why? Because he's pulling off sin, and he doesn't want to talk about it. we got another caller. Let me say this before. Go ahead, uh, Brother uh, Henry. Romans 6. Uh, this is to, to those who have that spirit, you know, uh, or attitude that Junior is displaying. And what shall Paul writing to Christians. What shall we say then? Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should get this, we walk in newness of life. I don't know if this will make Junior feel better or not, but I want him to know that I've sinned. Uh, and I needed salvation, and I needed grace, and I needed mercy. I've been taught wrong before, too, Junior. You know, I want you to understand that. I thought I was saved at one point in my life as well, listening to guys like Joel, John Osteen and Joel Osteen repeating a sinner's prayer until the Lord blessed me with men and godly women to come in my life to sit down with the Bible open, just like we're doing, and mm -hmm. tell me what I need to do to be saved. Please understand that. Please understand Amen. that I'm not on this on this program uh, acting like I've never fallen short, never done anything wrong at the baptism. Make sure you understand that. That what I understand is God has given me grace and God has given me mercy, and I cannot practice sin. I want mm -hmm. you to understand. If that will make, if that will help you uh, to to search God's word, uh, Junior, and to examine yourself, I'm gonna let you know that. I let anybody. I am not Jesus, and Amen. never proclaim to be Jesus. But one thing I understand that I walk in a newness of life, and I'm not going to let you or anybody else try to hinder my righteous works that I do because I want to be obedient to what the Bible says. Understand that. See, this is why Cain killed Abel. 
because his brother's works were more righteous than his. Amen. And they're folk, you got to understand, there's going to be folk mad at you, brothers and sisters, when your works are righteous and theirs are not. And because they have the spirit of Cain. Amen. Just simply do what's right. That's what you do. You do what's right. And don't allow anybody to turn you away from your from the written word that can be understood. 281-837-2222. Brother Javier Frias. Yes, before we take this call, I want to read Philippians 3.18. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, forth unto those things which are before. And that's the example Paul is showing. We forget those things that are behind and look at what's in front of us that Christ has showed us as we carry our cross. And John 10, 35, if they call, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. They just have to be rightly divided. I want to take that caller. Go ahead, caller. We have a few seconds. Okay, my question is, okay, the last thing, I want to make sure that, that y'all, uh, that I've heard y'all right, man, man, okay? Now, y'all see, that last uh, when we die, we immediately go. We immediately go to uh to heaven or hell. Uh, I think what y'all say. That's why I'm standing. So I need to know what scripture that is, please. Yeah. Yes. And then also, uh, okay, when you were gave back to Christ, okay, he said that they showed you in the book what you need to and in, in the Bible what you need to see or whatever. And when you said that, uh, you saw that. But so you tell me that. You said you were a sinner. Okay, so you never asked the Lord to forgive you for your sins and repent of those sins. I don't know how did you how did you how do you know that you were uh, that you're a child of God or that you're a, 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 a Christ. Yes, just wanted to ask you for answer your first question. I'll toss it to Henry. John three thirteen, and no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That's also in Acts chapter two, and in Luke sixteen, it shows where uh, the rich man went to hell and the poor man went to paradise. John three thirteen, brother Henry. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna pick this subject up next week, man. Amen. Lord let you live and let us live. We're gonna touch on this very subject on next week mm -hmm. about hell and where people go when they die, okay? And so if you tune in next week, we will give you more scriptures. Or ma'am. Oh, okay. And so we, we're out of time. If you're not a member of the church here, believe, repent, confess, get baptized in water for mission of sin, live faithful unto death. Uh, we leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16, the church of Christ salutes you. Like he just doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Yeah. But it's clear there are going to be people sure, sure. in hell. The and he keeps saying, that, well, we would do it all mm -hmm. true. And we're not going to gonna put our children in the earth. Right. Right. And we're not right. going to kill our children. Right. You understand? Yeah. Before the but it, life, thing they do against us. The uh, Father made all of us. He is the one that has the power of life right. and death. That argument about the children is a mute argument. Because we're not, they're not going to sit at our judgment seat, as you said last week, at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. And Junior just cannot accept that. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, he's overzealous, as he said, for love. Yeah. Junior, you can't outlove the Father. Amen. I mean, Jesus yeah. said, it's good that you be like 16. the Master. You can't overwork the Master. Yeah. You can't outlove. I want to outlove yeah. Jesus. No such thing. No, man, y'all did great. God bless you. God bless you. They can't get any better than that. You read the text. And as you said, brother, God bless you, Henry. You read the text. The more you read exactly the text, the more you hate it. As right. Saul, mm -hmm. the more David did right, the more he got right. the arm sent to throw the jail. Because he said he feared because he was walking according to how God would have him to be. Amen. He feared God. He could see. Yep. And he see God was with him because he couldn't get it. Amen. So, and it made him hate him more. Yeah, even more. It didn't draw love yeah. off. Man, <laughs> Lord, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you oh, both. Good, God bless you all. Man, thank God we can record this. God yeah. bless you, man. Man, thank God you can record this stuff. This stuff is vintage, man. This, cause this is what people think. Yeah. If we had wrote the Bible, I could see anger being hurled at us. You know? <laughs> that would be another. Hey, Roddy, you wrote it, didn't you, old man? Yeah. You know, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we didn't. Yeah, yeah. We don't even have. Yeah, we don't have a mind to put something together. But we are in 100% agreement Amen. with the word, Amen. and we cannot side with other people Amen. because they disagree with the word. What did Peter say? Ask. We ought to obey God rather than man. Audience, you think when you hear that sometimes, you think when well, somebody's trying to hurt you. No, it's someone disagreeing with you and getting your mind to adjust to.
to what sin is, and you're supposed to obey God rather than man. Let God be true and every man a lie. Amen. Amen. God bless you, preacher. My goodness. Oh, bless his heart. That fella. Mm. He did good last week, he, but he, he didn't have the ability this week to stop okay. and listen. Okay. Last week he did. And he tell him. He said, "I'll call back. I'm gonna hang up and listen." But he doesn't stop. You don't have to hang up and listen. Just listen, and that way he can say something after you have spoken. He wants to hang up and listen. That's not what it's about. Yeah, John fifteen eighteen. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world. But I've chosen you out of the world, mm -hmm. therefore the world hated you. Seriously. And so, yes, what he doesn't want to preach it. That's a good scripture. What he doesn't want to agree to is mm -hmm. the truth of scripture concerning the dis definition of damn, that souls are damned. He doesn't want to recognize he doesn't hell. Want he doesn't want to talk about that and what causes one to be damned and condemned. Amen. Because it's avoidable. Yeah. It is avoidable. That's what Henry did a good job Man, I've said that we, we all could have gave that speech yeah. Henry gave. Amen. We've all said that we all were deceived oh, and we all thought we were safe. And then when we heard it, Junior, right. we realized we have to change. And guess what? Junior, God gave us strength to walk differently. Like Peter said, it's not by our power, our righteousness. It's by the Lord's power right. and His righteousness that we are able to right. do these things. Here's another one, John 12. See, that, the, the sadness is these are not our words. My goodness. He says in John 12, 46. This is what, and see, Junior, you are angry with Jesus, not us. And you can't do that. You do better hating us than Christ. I am come in light into the world. Whosoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. That's the solution. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Now, Henry read this last week, or Brother Frizz. He that rejected me and received not my words had one that judged him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me commandment. What I should say and what I should be. That's another one of the scriptures. And look, he says, and I know verse 5, that his commandment is life everlasting. His instruction, whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said to me, so I speak. And that's what here is pointing out, Junior. And for your audience, is he's repeating these words. And he says, when these come before these words, these words are going to condemn you. And that is now a condemnation. So if that doesn't mean someone's going to go to hell, then what's the big deal about condemnation? Nah. Yeah. God bless you, brother. Man, that was so wonderful.